Good morning, everyone. This uh, recording is intended for our criminology students for their criminology licensure examinations. And <clears throat> in order for them not to be exhausted of the readings of the different uh, codals of the different subjects, this recording is intended for you to um, hear the codal provisions without reading it. All you have to do is to have your headset no, while you are traveling para naman yung mga mata natin ay makapagpahinga. So you can um, utilize this audio recording for that purpose. This is also intended for our uh, law student and those who are taking the bar examinations very soon. And we have uh, exercises as we go along with uh, reading the codal provisions of Criminal Law 1, Book 1. You can answer them and assess yourself. If pwede na ba tayong mag-exam, okay? Criminal Law 1, Articles 1 to 10. The Revised Penal Code, Act Number 3815, passed on December 8, 1930, but uh, our Article 1 time in Act takes effect <clears throat> was on 1st day of January 1932. These are the general provisions regarding the date of enforcement and application of the provisions of this code regarding the offenses, the persons, and liabilities and penalties. Book 1 of Criminal Law. Now, what is the difference between criminal law and a crime? Criminal law is that branch or division of law which defines crimes, treats of their nature, and provides for their punishment while crime is an act committed or omitted in violation of public law of forbidding or commanding it. And uh, for jurisprudence, from the Latin term jurisprudentia, which means the study, knowledge, or science of law, it is the course of court decisions as distinguished from legislation and the date of effectiveness and application of the provisions of this code, Article 1, time when act takes effect, this code shall take effect on the first day of January 1932. Article 2, application of its provisions, except as provided in the treaties and laws of preferential application, the provisions of this code shall be enforced not only within the Philippine archipelago, including its atmosphere, its interior waters, and maritime zone, but also outside of its jurisdiction against those who, first, should commit an offense while on a Philippine ship or airship, Second, should forge or counterfeit any coin or currency note of the Philippine Islands or obligations and securities issued by the government of the Philippine Islands. Third, should be liable for acts connected with the introduction into these islands of the obligations and securities mentioned in the preceding number. Fourth, while being public officers or employees should commit an offense in the exercise of their functions. Or fifth, should commit any of the crimes against national security and the law of nations defined in Title I of Book II of this Code. The Bill of Rights of the 1987 Constitution imposes the following limitations. First, no ex post facto law or bill of attainder shall be enacted, that is under Article 3, Section 22. Second, no person shall be held to answer for a criminal offense without due process of law under Article 3, Section 14, Paragraph 1. The first limitation prohibits the passage of retroactive laws which are prejudicial to the accused. An ex post facto law is one which, number one, makes criminal an act done before the passage of the law and which was innocent when done and punishes such an act. Two, aggravates a crime or makes it greater than it was when committed. 
3. Changes the punishment and inflicts a greater punishment than the law annexed to the crime when committed. 4. Alters the legal rules of evidence and authorizes conviction upon less or different testimony than the law required at the time of the commission of the offense. 5. Assumes to regulate civil rights and remedies only. In effect, imposes penalty or deprivation of a right for something which, when done, was lawful. And 6. Deprives a person accused of a crime some lawful protection to which he has become entitled, such as the protection of a former conviction or acquittal, or a proclamation of amnesty. Bill of Attainder is a legislative act which inflicts punishment without trial. Its essence is the substitution of a leg legislative act for a judicial determination of guilt that is um, fully explained in People v. Ferrer, 48 Scra 382 and 395. Example, Congress passes a law which authorizes the arrests and imprisonment of communists without the benefit of a judicial trial that is a bill of attainder. Article 3. Definitions. Acts and omissions punishable by law are felonies or delitus. Felonies are committed not only by means of deceit or dolo, but also by means of fault or culpa. There is deceit when the act is performed with deliberate intent, and there is fault when the wrongful act results from imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. Article 4. Criminal Liability. Criminal liability shall be incurred first by any person committing a felony or delito, although the wrongful act can be different from that which he intended. Second, by any person performing an act which should be an offense against persons or property were it not for the inherent impossibility of its accomplishment or an account of the employment of inadequate or ineffectual means. There is no crime and there is no law punishing it. That is the very uh, famous doctrine. Article 5. Duty of the court in connection with acts which should be repressed but which are not covered by law and in cases of excessive penalties. Whenever a court has knowledge of any act which it may be deemed proper to repress and which is not punishable by law, it shall render the proper decision and shall report to the chief executive through the Department of Justice the reason which induced the court to believe that the said act should be made the subject of legislation. In the same way, the court shall submit to the chief executive, executive through the Department of Justice such statement as may be deemed proper without suspending the execution of the sentence when a strict enforcement of the provisions of this code would result in the imposition of a clearly excessive penalty taking into consideration the degree of malice and the injury caused by the offense. Article 6. Consummated, Frustrated, and Attempted Felonies Consummated felonies as well as those which are frustrated and attempted are punishable. A felony is consummated when all the elements necessary for its execution and accomplishment are present and it is frustrated when the offender performs all the acts of execution which would produce the felony as a consequence, but which nevertheless do not produce it by reason of causes independent of the will of the perpetrator. There is an attempt when the offender commences the commission of the felony directly or overt acts, and does not perform all the acts of execution which should produce a felony by reason of some cause or accident, other than his own spontaneous desistance. Frustrated and attempted felonies. In frustrated murder, the accused performs all of the acts which he believes necessary to consummate the crime. Death fails to follow for causes entirely apart from his will. In attempted murder, the accused begins the commission of the crime by overt acts, but involuntarily desists from performing the other acts necessary to consummate the crime he being prevented from so doing by some cause outside of his own will. These <clears throat> stages are better explained in the people of the Philippine Islands versus Dagman et al.
classification of felonies. There are classification of felonies, formal felonies, or those which are always consummated because the offender cannot perform the acts necessary for their execution without consummating the offense. Examples are crimes punished on the basis of the result or gravity, such as physical injuries. Physical injuries are punished as to whether they are serious, less serious, or slight. The degree of injury cannot be determined without first consummating the offense. Material felonies are those which can be committed in any of the three stages of execution. Felonies which cannot be committed in the frustrated stage, such as rape, which can be either attempted or consummated because the essence of rape is carnal knowledge. Hence, even slight penetration of the female organ consummates the crime of rape because there is already carnal knowledge. Or theft, which cannot be frustrated because its element of unlawful taking is deemed complete from the moment the offender gains possession of the thing, even if he has no opportunity to dispose of the same. Now, in People versus Dagman et al., in case at bar, it appears clearly that the Dagman believed that he had performed all of the acts necessary to consummate the crime of murder and therefore of his own will desisted from striking for their blows he believed that he had killed Kang Kin. death did not result for reasons entirely apart from the will of the accused this surely stamps the crime as frustrated murder if after the first blow someone had rushed to the assistance of Kang Kin and by his efforts had prevented the accused from proceeding further in the commission of the crime, the accused not believing that he had performed all of the acts necessary to cause death, he would have been guilty of attempted murder. Article 7. When light felonies are punishable, light felonies are punishable only when they have been consummated with the exception of those committed against person or property. Article 8. Conspiracy in proposal to commit felony are punishable only in the cases in which the law specially provides a penalty therefore a conspiracy exists when two or more persons come to an agreement concerning the commission of a felony and decide to commit it there is proposal when the person who has decided to commit a felony proposes its execution to some other person or persons what are crimes mala in say these are the acts or omission which are inherently evil or mala means evil in sin by itself. Generally, crimes mala in se are felonies punished under the revised penal code. There are, however, crimes which, although punished under special laws, are deemed mala in se, such as those which are mere modification of the provisions of the code, like cattle rustling, which modifies Articles 308, 309, and 310, and qualified theft. Thus, Presidential Decree 533 is not a malum prohibitum, but a modification of theft and malicious mischief. Therefore, the rules and system on penalties under the Revised Penal Code apply. What are crimes mala prohibita? They are acts which are made evil because there is law prohibiting the same. This would not be wrong but for the fact that positive law forbids them. In this case, the only question asked is, has the law been violated? When the act is illegal, intent of the offender is immaterial. Now we have here Article 9 of Act 3815 and Article 9 as amended by RA 10951 when it comes to penalty. <clears throat> Article 9 as amended by R.A. 109151. Grave felonies, less grave felonies, and light felonies. Grave felonies are those to which the law attaches the capital punishment or penalties which in any of their periods are afflictive in accordance with Article 25 of this code. Less grave felonies are those which the law punishes with penalties which in their maximum period are correctional. In accordance with the above mentioned article, light felonies are those infractions of law for the commission of which the penalty of a less to minor or a fine at exceeding 40,000 pesos or both is provided. In Article 9, Act 3815, it was only 200 pesos. 
but as of today because 200 pesos is impractical it was amended in RA 10951 raising from 200 pesos to 40,000 pesos article 10 offenses not subject to the provisions of this code offenses which are on in the future may be punishable under special laws are not subject to the provisions of this code this code shall be supplementary to such laws unless the latter should specially provide the contrary justifying circumstances and circumstances which exempt from criminal liability article 11 justifying circumstances the following do not incur any liability or criminal liability first anyone who acts in defense of his person or rights provided that the following circumstances concur first unlawful aggression second reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent or repel it third lack of sufficient provocation Second paragraph, anyone who acts in defense of the person or rights of his spouse, ascendants, descendants, or legitimate, natural, or adopted brothers or sisters or his relatives by affinity in the same degrees and those consanguinity within the fourth civil degree, provided that the first and second requisites prescribed in the next preceding circumstances are present, and the further requisite. In case the revocation was given by the person attacked, that the one making defense had no part therein. Anyone who acts in defense of the person or rights of a stranger, provided that the first and second requisites mentioned in the first circumstances of this article are present and that the person defending be not induced by revenge, resentment, or other evil motive. Fourth, any person who, in order to avoid an evil or injury, does not act which causes damage to another, provided that the following requisites are present, First, that the evil sought to be avoided actually exists. Second, that the injury feared to be greater than that done to avoid it. Third, that there be no other practical and less harmful means of preventing it. Fifth paragraph, any person who acts in the fulfillment of a duty or in the lawful exercise of a right or office. Sixth, any person who acts in obedience to an order issued by a superior for some lawful purpose. Now, what is or what are justifying circumstances? These were in the acts of the actor are in accordance with law and hence he incurs no criminal liability. Since there is no crime, there is no criminal, hence he should not be called an offender but an actor, and therefore no civil liability either. That is why in Article 101, in cases falling within subdivisions 4 of Article 11, the persons for th whose benefit the harm has been prevented shall be civilly liable in proportion to the benefit which they may have been received. The civil liability is not on the actor. The following are justifying circumstances. A. For defense of self, of relatives and, and of strangers. Second, state of necessity. Third, fulfillment of duty, and fourth, obedience to superior order. What are the requisites of self-defense? First, unlawful aggression. Second, reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent or repel it. And third, lack of sufficient provocation on the part of the person defending himself. Self-defense includes defense of life, of chastity, of property, and of honor. The latter includes defense against defamation. Unlawful aggression is indispensable not only for self-defense, but for defense of relatives and strangers as well as, as well for without unlawful aggression, there is nothing to prevent or repel. There can be no self-defense unless it is proven that there had been unlawful aggression on the part of the person injured or killed by the assailant. What is unlawful aggression? To constitute unlawful aggression, it is necessary that the, an attack or material aggression, an offensive act positively determining the intent of the aggressor to cause injury, shall have been made. A mere threatening or intimidating attitude is not sufficient. There must be a real danger to life or personal safety. Unlawful aggression must be real or at least imminent. Real aggression means an attack with physical force or with a weapon such as to cause injury or danger to life or personal safety. 
imminent and lawful aggression means an attack that is impending or at the point of happening, it must be offensive and positively strong. When there is a reasonable necessity of the means employed, the reasonable necessity of the means employed depends upon the circumstances surrounding the aggression. The state of mind of the aggressor and the available weapon at the defender's disposal, it cannot be measured by mathematical calculation. That is elucidated in the case of people versus gutual. In self-defense, there should be necessity of the action taken as well as the means used. The latter requires a consideration of first whether the aggressor was armed, second the nature and quality of the weapon used, and third the physical conditions and sizes of both the aggressor and the person defending himself. And this one is elucidated in People v. Nell. Reasonable necessity of the means employed to prevent or repel the unlawful aggression cannot be present when the unlawful aggression on the part of the victim has ceased. The concept of lack of sufficient provocation on the part of the defender. Lack of sufficient provocation on the part of the defender shows that there may have been provocation but it should not be sufficient and it must not immediately precede the act. The law requires that the provocation be sufficient or proportionate to the act committed and adequate to arouse one to its commission. It is not even enough that the provocation act be unreasonable or annoying. Sufficient provocation as a requisite of incomplete self-defense is different from sufficient provocation as a mitigating circumstance. As an element of self-defense, it pertains to its absence on the part of the person defending. Well, as a mitigating circumstance, it refers to its presence in the part of offending party. Article 12, Circumstances which exempt from criminal liability. The following are exempt from criminal liability. First, an imbecile or an insane person unless the latter has acted during a lucid interval. When the imbecile or an insane person has committed an act which the law defines as a felony or Delito. The court shall order his confinement in one of the hospitals or asylums established for person thus afflicted, which he shall not be permitted to leave without first obtaining the permission of the same court. Now, in paragraphs 2 and 3, the paragraphs 2 and 3 on the exempting circumstance of minority is deemed repealed by RA number 9344 otherwise known as Juvenile Justice and Welfare Law. Minority as an exempting circumstance is now found in Section 6 of RA Number 9344. In the Revised Penal Code, before, a person under 9 years of age are one of the exempting or the circumstances which exempt from criminal liability as well as with Paragraph 3, a person over 9 years of age and under 15, unless he has acted with discernment, in which case such minor shall be proceeded against in accordance with the provisions of Article 80 of this Code. Now, it was already amended and it was already repealed by RA 9344. The minimum age of criminal responsibility shall a child 15 years of age or under at the time of the commission of the offense shall be exempt from criminal liability. In paragraph 4, any person who while performing a lawful act with due care causes an injury by mere accident without fault or intention of causing it. Fifth, any person who act under the compulsion of irresistible force. Sixth, any person who acts under the impulse of uncontrollable feel, fear, fear of an equal or greater injury. Seventh, any person who fails to perform an act required by law when prevented by some lawful insuperable cause. <clears throat> now, what is or are distinction between justifying circumstances and exempting circumstances? In justifying circumstances, the act is legal within the bounds of law, while exempting is the act is criminal. 
In justifying circumstances, there is no crime, hence no criminal. In exempting circumstances, there is a crime and a criminal. In justifying circumstances, there is no crime, there is no criminal, and no civil liability. In exempting circumstances, there is a crime, there is a criminal, but exempt from criminal liability, and there is civil liability. In justifying circumstances, the emphasis of the law is on the act, while on the exempting circumstances, the emphasis of the law is on the actor. What is insanity? It exists when there is a complete deprivation of intelligence in committing the act. That is, the accused is deprived of reason. He acts without the least discernment because there is complete absence of power to discern. Or there is a total deprivation of freedom of the will. Mere abnormality of the mental faculties will not exclude imputability. That was elucidated in the case of People versus Dana. How are penal laws to be construed as to minor offenders? Penal laws should be liberally construed in favor of the offender. Thus, considering the gravity of the offense and the interest of justice, the court has admitted the birth certificate of an accused to prove minority. Although said birth certificates were not presented or offered in the trial court, since the fact of minority established by an official document prepared by the Department of Social Services and Development in the exercise of its functions and incorporated in the records of the case, judicial notice can be taken thereof ex mero moto. That was elucidated in the case of People v. Regalario. Republic Act No. 9344 or Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2006. Now, <clears throat> since it was amended, the paragraphs 2 and 3 of Article 12, we have here Section 6, the minimum age of criminal responsibility. A child 15 years of age or under at the time of the commission of the offense shall be exempt from criminal liability. However, the child shall be subjected to an intervention program pursuant to Section 20 of this Act. A child above 15 years but below 18 years of age shall likewise be exempt from criminal liability and be subjected to an intervention program unless he or she has acted with discernment in which case such child shall be subjected to the appropriate proceedings in accordance with this act. The exemption from criminal liability here established does not include exception from civil liability which shall be enforced in accordance with existing laws. What is the basis for exemption from criminal liability for accident? Under Article 12, criminal liability does not arise in case a crime is committed by any person who, while performing a lawful act with due care, causes an injury by mere accident without fault or intention of causing it. The exemption from criminal liability under the circumstance showing accident is based on the lack of criminal intent. For an accident to be exempting, the act has to be lawful. The act of firing a shotgun at another is not a lawful act that is elucidated in People v. Agreed Die. So we have here <clears throat> quiz at the 70 items. You have to copy and paste the link in the search bar. This is an unlimited quiz, so immediately you will know your scores after you will take this quiz. And for those who are traveling, you can have this quiz later when you have a um, when you have your vacant period or time. Okay. Now, we have here Article 13, Mitigating Circumstances. The following are mitigating circumstances. First, those mentioned in the preceding chapter when all the requisites necessary to justify or to exempt from criminal liability in their respective cases are not attendant. Second, that the offender is under 18 years of age or over 70 years. In the case of the minor, he shall be proceeded against in accordance with the provisions of Article 80. 
Third, that the offender had no intention to commit so grave a wrong as that committed. Fourth, that sufficient provocation or threat on the part of the offended party immediately preceded the act. Fifth, the act, that the act was committed in the immediate vindication of a grave offense to the one committing the felony or delito, his spouse, ascendants, or relatives by affinity within the same degrees. Six, that of having acted upon an impulse so powerful as naturally to have produced passion or obfuscation. Seventh, that the offender had voluntarily surrendered himself to a person in authority or his agents, or that he had voluntarily confessed his guilt before the court prior to the presentation of the evidence for the prosecution. Eighth, that the offender is deaf and dumb, blind, or otherwise suffering some physical defect which thus restricts his means of action, defense, or communications with his fellow beings. Ninth, such illness of the offender as would diminish the exercise of the willpower of the offender without, however, depriving him of the consciousness of his acts. Tenth, and finally, any other circumstances of a similar nature and analogous to those above mentioned. Circumstances which aggravate criminal liability Article 14, Aggravating Circumstances. The following are aggravating circumstances. 1. That the advantage be taken by the offender of his public position. 2. That the crime be committed in contempt or with insult to the public authorities. 3. That the act be committed with insult or in disregard of the respect due the offended party on account of his rank, age, or sex, or that is be committed in the dwelling of the offended party if the latter has not given provocation. 4. That the act be committed with abuse of confidence or of use and gratefulness. 5. That the crime be committed in the palace of the chief executive or in his presence, or where public authorities are engaged in the discharge of their duties or in a place dedicated to religious worship. 6. That the crime be committed in the night time or in an inhabited place or by a band whenever such circumstances may facilitate the commission of the offense, whenever more than three armed male factors shall have acted together in the commission of an offense, it shall be deemed to have been committed by a ban. Seventh, that the crime be committed on the occasion of a conflagration, shipwreck, earthquake, epidemic, or other calamity or misfortune. Eighth, that the crime be committed with the aid of armed men of or persons who ensure or afford impunity. 9. That the accused is a recidivist. A recidivist is one who, at the time of his trial for one crime, shall have been previously convicted by final judgment of another crime embraced in the same title of this code. 10. That the offender has been previously punished by an offense to which the law attaches an equal or greater penalty or for two or more crimes to which it attaches a lighter penalty. 11. That the crime be committed in consideration of a prize, reward, or promise. 12. That the crime be committed by means of inundation, fire, poison, explosion, stand, stranding of a vessel, or international damage thereto, derailment of a locomotive, or by the use of any other artifice involving great waste and ruin. That 13. That the act be committed with evidence premeditation. That craft, fraud, or disguise be employed. 15. That the advantage be taken of superior strength or means be employed to weaken the defense. 16. That the act be committed with treachery or alivosha. There is treachery when the offender commits any of the crimes against the person, employing means, method, or forms in the execution thereof which tend directly and specially to ensure its execution, without risk to himself arising from the defense which the offended party may make. 17. That means be employed or circumstances brought about which add ignominy to the natural effects of the act. 18. That the crime be committed after unlawful entry. There is an unlawful entry when an entrance is effected by a way not intended for the purpose. 19. That as a means to be to the commission of a crime, a wall, roof, floor, door, or window be broken. 20. That the crime be committed with the aid of persons under 15 years of age, 
or by means of motor vehicles, airships, or other similar means. 21. That the wrong done in the commission of the crime be deliberately augmented by causing another other wrong not necessary for its commission. We have also alternative circumstances. Article 15, their concept. Alternative circumstances are those which must be taken into consideration as aggravating or mitigating according to the nature and effects of the crime and the other conditions attending its commission. They are the relationship, intoxication, and the degree of instruction and education of the offender. The alternative circumstance of relationship shall be taken into consideration when the offended party in the spouse, ascendants, descendants, legitimate, natural, or adopted brother or sisters are relative by affinity in the same degrees of the offender. The intoxication of the offender shall be taken into consideration as a mitigating circumstances when the offender has committed a felony in a state of intoxication. If the same is not habitual or subsequent to the plan to commit said felony, but when the intoxication is habitual or intentional, it shall be considered as an aggravating circumstance. What are the three alternative circumstances? They are relationship, intoxication, and degree of instruction and education of the offender. The relationship include, included are exclusively that of spouse, ascendant, descendant, legitimate, natural, or adopted brother or sister, or relative by affinity in the same degrees. Step parents and stepchildren are included by analogy, but not uncles and nieces, for there is no mention of relatives by consanguinity other than those enumerated in the article. When is relationship aggravating and when mitigating? The revised penal code is silent as to when relationship is mitigating and when it is aggravating. In crimes against chastity such as acts of lasciviousness, relationship is aggravating. However, rape is no longer a crime against chastity but a crime against persons still relationship aggravating in rape. Article 264 provides that if the injury is inflicted upon the father, mother, or child, other ascendants or descendants and spouse, the penalty shall be one or two degrees higher, except when committed against the offender's child due to excessive chastisement and which case it is not aggravating. When is intoxication mitigating and when aggravating? First, a person pleading intoxication as mitigating circumstances must show that First, he has taken a quantity of alcoholic beverage prior to the commission of the crime sufficient to produce the effect of obfuscating reason. Second, he is not a habitual drinker and did not take the alcohol drink with the intention to reinforce his resolve to commit the crime. <clears throat> the offender's mental faculties must be affected by drunkenness. Mere drinking of liquor prior to the commission of the crime does not necessarily produce a state of intoxication. It is mitigating if it is not habitual, not intentional, and self-control is diminished as a result of the intoxication. Otherwise, it is aggravating. Therefore, an, an alcoholic who commits a felony while intoxicated will always suffer from the circumstances because either habitual or intentional intoxication well, suffice as the law used the disjunctive or inhabitual or intentional. Persons criminally liable for felonies. Article 16. Who are criminally liable? The following are criminally liable for grave and less grave felonies. First, principals. Second, accomplices. And third, accessories. The following are criminally liable for light felonies. Principals and accomplices. Article 17, Principles, the following are considered principles, those who take a direct part in the execution of the act, second, those who directly force or induce others to commit it, third, those who cooperate in the commission of the offense by another act without which it would not have been accomplished. Must the principal by inducement appear at the scene of the crime? The answer is no. Principals by inducement or mastermind are liable even if they did not appear in the scene of the crime because the crime would not have been committed without the inducement. That is why they induce others to commit the crime, so that they would remain in the background. 
The fact that it was MM and not petitioner who dealt directly with said fixers cannot exculpate petitioner from the charge of falsification. He is a principal by inducement in the commission of said crime. Article 18 accomplices are those persons who, not being included in Article 17, cooperate in the execution of the offense by previous or simultaneous act. Is conspiracy necessary for the liability of an accomplice? accomplice? Now, conspiracy is not necessary for he is not a principal but he supplies material or moral aid to the principal in an efficacious way. He knows of the criminal design of the principal and he cooperates knowingly or intentionally but in a manner not indispensable to the commission of the crime. Otherwise, he will be considered a principal by indispensable cooperation. He knows of the criminal design of the principal and he cooperates knowingly or intentionally but in a manner not indispensable to the commission of the crime. Otherwise, he will be considered a principal by indispensable cooperation. Article 19 accessories are those who have knowledge of the commission of the crime and without having participated therein either as principals or accomplices take part subsequent to its commission in any of the following manners. 1. By profiting themselves or assisting the offender to profit by the effects of the crime. 2. By concealing or destroying the body of the crime or the effects or instruments thereof in order to prevent its discovery. 3. By harboring, concealing, or assisting in the escape of the principles of the crime, providing the accessory acts with abuse of his public functions or whenever the author of the crime is guilty of treason, fireside, murder or an attempt to take the life of the chief executive or is known to be habitually guilty of some other crime. How do accessories profit by the effects of the crime? A person who receives any property from another and use it, knowing that the same had been stolen is guilty as an accessory because he is profiting by the effects of the crime. By employing the carabos in his farm, Aititi was profiting by the objects of the theft. E.T. has knowledge of the crime and yet without having participated either as principal or as an accomplice, for he did not participate in the taking of the carabaos. He took part subsequent to the commission of the act of taking by profiting himself by its effect. E.T. is an accessory after the fact. Article 20 Accessories were exempt from criminal liability. The penalties prescribed for accessories shall not be imposed upon those who are such with respect to their spouses, ascendants, descendants, legitimate, natural, and adopted brothers and sisters, or relatives by affinity within the same degrees, with a single exception of accessories falling within the provisions of paragraph 1 of the next preceding article. <clears throat> Just disregard this one. Um, penalties in general. Penalties that may be imposed. No felony shall be punishable by any penalty not prescribed by law prior to its commission. Article 22. Retroactive effect of the penal laws. Penal laws shall have a retroactive effect in so far as they favor the person's guilty of a felony who is not a habitual criminal, as this term is defined in Rule 5 of Article 62 of this Code. Although at the time of the publication of such laws, a final sentence has been pronounced and the convict is serving the same. Article 23, effect of pardon by the offended party. A pardon of the offended party does not extinguish criminal action except as provided in Article 344 of this code. But civil liability with regard to the interest of the injured party is extinguished by his express waiver. Article 24, measures of prevention or safety which are nor not considered penalties. The following shall not be considered as penalties. Number one, the arrest and temporary detention of accused persons as well as their detention by reason of insanity or imbecility or illness requiring their confinement in a hospital. Number two, the commitment of a minor to any of the institutions mentioned in Article 80 and of for the purposes specified therein. Number three, suspension from the employment of public office during the trial or in order to institute proceedings. Number four, fines and other corrective measures which in the exercise of their administrative disciplinary powers, superior officials may impose upon their subordinates. Five, deprivation of rights and the reparation which the civil laws may establish in a penal form. 
we have here classification of penalties in Article 25, penalties which may be imposed. The penalties which may be imposed according to this code and there are different classes are those included in the following. In the principal penalties, uh, we have capital punishment and uh, death, but death the day was already, death penalty was, already, was suspended by the Congress. Afflicted penalties, we have afflictive penalties, we have reclusion perpetua, reclusion temporal, perpetual or temporary absolute disqualification, that perpetual or temporary special disqualification and prison mayor. We have also correctional penalties, prison correctional, arresto mayor, suspension and destierro. And we have also light felonies, the arresto minor, public censure. Penalties common to the three preceding classes, what are those? <clears throat> Course fine and ban to keep the peace. Accessory penalties, perpetual or temporary absolute disqualification or special disqualification, suspension from public office, the right to vote and be voted for, the profession or calling, civil interdiction and indemnification for future or confiscation of instruments and proceeds of the offense, and payment of costs. Article 26, when afflictive, correctional or light penalty, light penalty. When afflictive, a uh, correctional or light penalty, a fine whether imposed as a single of, as an alternative penalty, shall be considered an afflictive penalty if it exceeds 6,000 pesos. A correctional penalty if it does not exceed 6,000 pesos but is not less than 200 pesos. And a light penalty if it less than 200 pesos. We have here um, section 1. Duration of penalties. So it covers from Articles 27 to 29. Article 27, Reclusion Perpetua, which provides that any person sentenced to any of the perpetual penalties shall be pardoned after undergoing the penalties of 30 years. So you have to take note of the the duration, which is 30 years. Even though we've learned in our previous discussion that even though you are pardoned by the chief executive or the, the president, it will not exonerate the criminal <clears throat> conviction or criminal judgment promulgated by the, the court. No? Uh, pwede kang makalabas because you are pardoned, but still, you still have, uh, you have a uh, criminal offense. So, meron ka pa rin, nakalathala pa rin, na uh, you have uh, criminal offenses. You are uh, violating our laws. Now, we have here also reclusion temporal. The penalty of reclusion temporal shall be from 12 years in one day to 20 years. And <clears throat> we have to take note, even though there is no duration on the reclusion perpetua because this is a uh, life sentence, but still meron pa um, a minimum sa reclusion perpetua, which is 21, uh, 20 years in one day to uh, life imprisonment. And uh, later on, we will discuss kung paano, bakit walang duration ng reclusion perpetua. So we have here prison mayor and uh, temporary disqualification. Ayan. The duration of the penalties of prison mayor and temporary disqualification shall be from 6 years in one day and uh, to 12 years. Except when the penalty of disqualification is imposed as an accessory penalty, in which case its duration shall be that of the principal penalty. Okay? So, kung accessory niya is a uh, disqualification. Kasi meron tayong mga cases na only person mayor la ang um, penalty. Now, we have here prison correctional, suspension, and destiero. So, we have learned that this, uh, in our previous topic, the word destiero. Diba? The duration of the penalties of prison correctional, suspension, and destiero shall be from 6 months and 1 day to 6 years, except when suspension is imposed as an accessory penalty. 
in which case its duration shall be that of the principal penalty. Okay. We have here arresto mayor. The duration of the penalty of arresto mayor shall be from one month and one day to six months. So you have to take note <clears throat> that in this case, uh, from present correctional down to arresto minor, you can apply for probation. No, basta six years ang um, six years and below ang um, penalty. And then we have here arresto minor, but it depends upon the judge. Gihapon. The duration of the penalty of arresto minor shall be from one day to 30 days. Most of the cases of theft, mga mild cases of theft. Ban to keep the peace. The ban to keep the peace shall be required to cover such period of time as the court may determine. So, meron tayong tinatawag na band, yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na bail band. No, that's a temporary liberty, but it will not exonerate your criminal liability nor your civil liability. So, we have here, para mas madaling maintindihan natin yung mga category and duration of the penalties. We have here, reclusion perpetua. 20 years and one day to life uh, sentence. We have here reclusion temporal, 12 years and one day to 20 years. <clears throat> Prison mayor and temporary disqualification, 6 years and one day to 12 years. Prison correctional, suspension and distero, 6 months and one day to 6 years. Arresto mayor, 1 month and one day to 6 months. And arresto minor, it is 1 day to 30 days. When the law fixed the duration of reclusion perpetua, has it become a divisible penalty? Because as a general rule, reclusion perpetua is indivisible penalty, meaning to say it should not uh, the duration of the penalty should not be fixed. Because kung divisible penalty, ang duration is <coughs> fixed by the law. Now, the court ruled here, no, although section 17 of RA 7659 fixed. The duration of reclusion perpetua from 20 years in one day to 40 years. No, there was no clear legislative intent to alter its original classification as an indivisible penalty. Now, if reclusion perpetua were, were classified as a divisible penalty, then Article 63 would lose its reason and the basis for existence. So there is <clears throat> no express provision that they want to alter its original classification as an indivisible penalty. Even though there is a promulgation of RA 7659 no, coming from the uh, legislator, but there is no intent to uh, repeal the original classification that it is an indivisible penalty. There are also other provisions involving reclusion perpetua such as Article 41 on its accessory penalties and Articles 61, Paragraph 2, and Paragraph 3, which have not been correspondingly amended. If you, have, if you really want to have a clear view <clears throat> of uh, this definition, you can read the case of People v. Lucas. Now, this ruling modified the decision in the same case. So dated May 1994, which held that reclusion perpetua had become a divisible penalty. Now, reclusion perpetua remains indivisible notwithstanding the fixing of its duration. Hence, it is error to impose 30 years of reclusion perpetua. Accused should suffer the entire extent of 40 years. So people versus Arohado, if you really want to have a clear understanding you have to read the people versus Arohado case. What was the reason for fixing the duration of reclusion perpetua? It would be absurd and violative of the scales of penalties to reckon the minimum of reclusion perpetua a third year since there would be a resultant lacuna gap whenever the penalty exceeds the maximum 20 years of reclusion temporal but is less than 30 years. So, lahat ng mga cases in which the penalty is 20 years in one day, considered as reclusion perpetua. 
Is a penalty exceeding 20 years within the range of reclusion perpetua? Uh, yes, there is a legal basis both in law and logic for PD 818 to declare that any penalty exceeding 20 years is within the range of reclusion perpetua. May the convict sentence to reclusion perpetua be allowed to remain on bail pending appeal? The question at uh, the court ruled here, no. Bail shall be granted to those charged with an offense, which under the law at the time of its commission and the time of the application for bail is punishable by reclusion perpetua when evidence of guilt is strong. So as a general rule, no bail shall be granted you know, to those charged with an offense, which is punishable by a reclusion perpetua. What is the minimum period of imprisonment of reclusion perpetua? Reclusion perpetua entails imprisonment of at least 30 years, but the statement in the dispositive portion of the decision of the trial court that the penalty is equivalent to 30 years gives the impression that after that period, the convict is to be immediately set free. This is not so. So rather, he only becomes eligible for pardon. So after 30 years of serving the minimum period, minimum, how we talk about minimum period of imprisonment of reclusion perpetua is 30 years. So after he or she serve the minimum imprisonment of 30 years, pwede siya mapardon ng chief executive or, or ng president. Okay? What is the rationale of the penalty of reclusion perpetua? The provision's intent is that a person condemned to undergo the penalty of reclusion perpetua shall remain in prison perpetually or for the rest of his natural life. However, he becomes eligible for pardon by the chief executive after he has been in prison for at least 30 years unless he is deemed unworthy of such pardon. Only if you are not... <coughs> Only unless you are worthy for such pardon, but if you are unworthy for such pardon, then you cannot be pardoned by the president. Now we have here reclusion temporal, <clears throat> one degree lower from reclusion perpetua, is the most severe of the divisible penalties, which duration of 12 years in one day to 20 years. So again, <clears throat> we talk about uh, divisible penalties, it fixed the duration no, of the set penalties. Only one day separates a divisible penalty of reclusion temporal from the indivisible penalty of reclusion perpetua. Both have the same accessory penalties of civil interdiction and perpetual absolute disqualification. We we'll talk about perpetual uh, habang buhay na disqualified ka to hold a public office. It is an afflicted penalty under Article 25 and therefore it is attached to grave felonies. It prescribed 15 years. Now we have here prison mayor. The medium period of prison mayor is for from 80 years and one day to 10 years. It is entirely wrong to describe 12 years. 5 months and 11 days as the medium period of prison mayor. Not only because it already exceeded prison mayor, but also because it is not the medium period of prison mayor. Now, on the <clears throat> future na mga articles that we are going to tackle, nandun yung mga minimum, minimum, or mga maximum period ng different category ng mga penalties na ito. So for now, we are going to deal the uh, the basic or the concept of these penalties. May the penalty of reclusion temporal for homicide with no mitigating circumstances be reduced to prison correctional. No, The court ruled here, no. That is gross ignorance of the law since prison correctional is two degrees lower than reclusion temporal. The duration of prison correctional is from six months and one day and to six years. The reduced penalty is therefore two degrees lower than the prescribed that prescribed by law for homicide. Since no mitigating circumstances was found in the original decision, 
nothing could justify the reduction of the penalty to 60 years of prison correction that not even the claim of the accused that they did not intend to commit the act of killing and harming the policeman could justify such reduction even if greater intention them were appreciated and still under the assumption that this, that one single penalty under 249 is permissible the said mitigating circumstances would be offset by any of the aggravating circumstances pursuant to article 64 paragraph when we talk about uh, greater intention it is uh, defined by the law that having an injurious result that is greater that than uh, than that intended. So, ibig sabihin if, even if that is not your intention, pero mas malala pa ang nangyari, <clears throat> no? So, even if, regardless of that, it could not be uh, mitigating circumstances. Now, what is the duration and prescriptive period of arresto mayor? The duration of arresto mayor is one month and one day to six months. So, lesser penalty lang. It is a correctional penalty and has accessory penalties of suspension of the right to hold office and the right of suffrage during the term of the sentence. For instance, less years physical injuries carries arresto mayor. The indeterminate sentence law does not apply since the maximum penalty does not exceed one year. That penalty prescribes in five years. Now, when we talk about prescriptive <clears throat> period, it is a period set by the statute within which a legal action can be brought or a right enforced. <clears throat> so, kung penalty is less than, uh, uh, and the penalty is arresto mayor sa kanang kaso, and then you did not file illegal action within the prescribed period, which is five years. So, they didn't have file because, again, there is a prescriptive period of filing illegal action of that case punishable with a penalty of arresto mayor. So, wala na kay chance. So, kung gusto ka nga mo, mudagan ang kaso, so, you have to file it within the prescriptive period, which is five years. Which between this tiero and arresto minor is a more severe penalty. Now, according to the case of Oi Chin Hua versus Ding Lasan, explain that this tiero is lighter than arresto mayor. Thusly, this tiero is not a higher penalty than arresto mayor, which is imprisonment or complete deprivation of liberty sa arresto mayor. Whereas the zero means banishment, uh, banishment or only a prohibition from residing within the radius of 25 kilometers from the actual residence of the accused for a specified length of <coughs> time. Okay. Article 28, Computation of Penalties. If the offender shall be in prison, the term of the duration of the temporary penalty shall be computed from the day on which the judgment of conviction shall have become final. <clears throat> and if the offender be not in prison, the term of the duration of the penalty consisting of the privation of liberty shall be computed from the day that the offender is placed at the disposal of the judicial authorities for the enforcement of the penalty. The duration of the other penalty shall be computed only from the day on which the defendant commences to serve his sentence. In computing the duration of penalty, regard should be had of the civil provision on the duration of days, weeks, months, and years. The same rule is followed in the prescription of penalties and of crimes. Hence, one month and one day means 31 days not 28 or 29 plus one day of February, though incarcerated on that month, or 31 plus one day of July, though imprisoned in July. So in the same vein, six years in one day means 360 days multiplied by six plus one day. So regarding leap year or years in between, <clears throat> because it is understood that in one year, there are 
360 days. In one month, there is uh, 30 days. So technically, uh, 30 times 12 equals uh, <clears throat> 360 days. But if it is 6 years, of course, you have to multiply it by 6 plus 1 day. Article 29, period of preventive imprisonment deducted from the term of imprisonment. Uh, typically, kung halimbawa na prison na siya, wala pa promulgation of judgment, wala pa judgment, it will be deducted from the term of imprisonment. It provides that to offenders who have undergone preventive imprisonment shall be credited in the service of their sentence consisting of deprivation of liberty with a full time during which they have undergone preventive imprisonment. If the detention prisoner agrees voluntarily in writing to abide by the same disciplinary rules imposed upon convicted prisoners except in the following cases, when they are recidivists or have been convicted previously twice, um, talk about recidivist, have been convicted previously twice or more times of any crime. And when upon being summoned for the execution of their sentence, they have failed to surrender voluntarily or they are fugitive to justice. If the detention prisoner does not agree to abide by the same disciplinary rules imposed upon convicted prisoners, he shall be credited in the service of his sentence with four-fifths of the time during which he has undergone preventive imprisonment. So that was amended by Republic Act 6127. <clears throat> so again, there is a waiver uh, to be executed by those who are preventively imprisoned. No, nga, ang yahang upbringing, ang yahang trato sa mga prisoners, whether it, they are convicted or not yet convicted, is the same lang. No? Nagin na sila'y permahanan. And then, <clears throat> whenever an accused has undergone preventive imprisonment for a period equal to or more than the possible maximum imprisonment of the offense charge to which he may be sentenced and his case is not yet terminated, he shall be released immediately without prejudice to the continuation of the trial thereof or the proceeding on appeal if the same is under review. So, for example, a young sentence is only magpalagay natin 6 years and then nanas sa prisuhan mga 6 years or almost 7 years. So, pagawasan na siya immediately but without prejudice to the continuation of the trial. Nalang yaha po ng trial pero since ang yahang penalty is 6 years, Makagawas na siya. In case the maximum penalty to which the accused may be sentenced is distiero, he shall be released after 30 days of preventive imprisonment. So kung iyahang penalty is distiero lang, immediately <clears throat> after 30 days of preventive imprisonment, ma-release na siya. Okay? What is purpose of preventive imprisonment? Now, it is to prevent the flight of the accused and is going into hiding. Kay, kapoy kay Sigpangita, no? Kung Sigpanginata ay o asa to dapit tong accused. So, para din na pinangita ay ikulong lang sa sardin ha, preventively in prison <clears throat> para during the trial dali lang kaayo ang tawagon. The accused is detained if the offense is not bailable. You have to take note of this. If it is not bailable or punishable by reclusion perpetua, they will be detained. No? If bailable, he cannot post bail and he is not qualified for recognizance. So, kung ang, <clears throat> ang case is bailable and then wala ka nakapost of bail, you, you cannot uh, have a temporary liberty and he is not qualified for recognizance so kung dili ka qualified for recognizance like a mga recognizance mong good uh, it says that um, it is any person in custody who, who cannot post bail due to poverty no, kung tungkol sa kapublihon 
<clears throat> they are qualified or they are categorized as uh, recognizance or they, they will be qualified for recognizance. Pwede sila makagawas even though they don't have any bail to post. Pero kung if you are not categorized on that certain uh, circumstances, dilig hapon ka kagawas. Kung halimbawa, dato kay kanya, wala ka post to bail or you have some certain property and you cannot post to bail, <clears throat> you cannot have uh, temporary liberty no, without posting a bail. But provided kaning qualified for recognizance, they are under the custody of a qualified member of the barangay or city or municipality where the accused resides. Mangitad to ka ng pledge that they will bring this accused during the trial. Now, uh, the offense is not bailable if it is punishable with death or reclusion perpetua and the evidence of guilt is strong. The mere fact that it is a capital offense does not per se make it non-bailable. There is other requirement that the evidence of guilt is strong. Okay? And, ha, and, you have to take note that the offense is not bailable if it is punishable with death or reclusion perpetua. Ganun siya. And, oh, with coupled with the evidence of guilt is strong. So, if the guilt is not strong, then you could post a, a bail. So, there, there is another requir other requirement that the evidence of guilt is strong. How will the time spent in prison by the detention prisoner be credited? It's full credit is given to the detention prisoner who agrees voluntarily in writing to abide by the same disciplinary rules imposed on convicts unless he is a recidivist or when upon being summoned for the execution of his sentence, he failed to surrender voluntarily. Otherwise, he shall be given four-fifth credit. So four-fifth of katong na serve na niya like for example, uh, twelve years, four four fifth of twelve years, um, a credit say uh, if it is uh, if he is a recidivist or uh, fugitive to justice. If the maximum penalty imposable is this terror, the accused shall be released after thirty days of preventive imprisonment because arresto minor one to thirty days is a more severe penalty than this terror under Article Seventy. So that's People versus Eduardo. You have to take note ng arresto minor, even if it is uh, penalized or the penalty is 1 to 30 days, mas severe siya nga penalty compare sa distero. So, uh, after 30 days, yun na lang mapagawas na accused. What is the remedy when the person has already served the maximum penalty imposable? The appropriate remedy is to file a petition for habeas corpus. Now, when we talk about habeas uh, corpus, or it's a simple term, show me the body. So, mag-file ang lawyer of habeas corpus, no? Nga para pagawason, of course, tong prisoner who serve maximum penalty imposable to him. Okay, it's very, it's a fundamental right of a certain criminal, I mean, certain uh, accused or a certain person who served the maximum penalty imposable to him and then nag-happen siya sa prison. No? So, kailangan mag-file o habeas corpus sa ang lawyer in order for him to go out from the prison. In accordance with the resolution in Angeles and Agustin, which held that the rules on habeas corpus should be liberally applied in cases which are sufficient in substance, and the motion can be considered as substantial compliance with the rules on habeas corpus. Having served more than the maximum imposable penalty, the accused should be released. Release gina siya after the service of sentence in, uh, uh, more than the maximum imposable penalty. Can a convict be released on bail or uh, cognizance? So you have to take note that he is a convict. Oh? You have to take note of the word convict. Convicted na siya. There is a promulgation that uh, he committed the crime. Of course, as a general rule, is it's no. It is patently erroneous to release a convict on recognizance. 
Section 24, Rule 114 of the Rules of Court prohibits the grant of bail after conviction by final judgment and after the convict has started to serve sentence. The only exception there too is when the convict has applied for probation. For example, six years and below la ayahang uh, imposable penalty, then he could apply for probation and he will be released. No? from this the service of sentence and he commences to serve sentence provided the penalty and the offense are within the purview of the probation law in what instance can a convict be allowed to post bail pending appeal so for example na an uh, conviction from the rtc and then you appeal you know to the higher court but we have here, regardless of the nature of the appeal, whether it is a question of fact or purely legal issues, the right to bail pending appeal remains unabridged. The right after conviction may be a matter of discretion, but it does not appear in this case that the lower court denied bail upon consideration of certain facts and circumstances that relate to the possibility of petitioner absconding to thwart the process of criminal justice which is the primary consideration in granting or denying bail, for it is not so much in the imposition of the allegedly excessive penalty that habeas corpus might lie. For appeal is the proper remedy, but in the denial of bail, without sufficient warrant that the detention of petitioners is illegal. While the petitioners pleaded guilty and their appeal is only a question of law, the question sentence has not become final as to give warrant to petitioners detention pending appeal without right to bail. Nor may petitioners be said to have commenced service of a sentence since they have assailed their sentence as illegal. And the lower court's reason for denying bail pending appeal is therefore legally attainable. Petitioners should have been allowed to post bail for their provisional liberty while their appeal is pending on court. So, but, okay, regardless of the nature of appeal. That is uh, the case of Zafra versus City Warden. Will the convict who was imposed of the penalty of reclusion perpetua or this or this tear will be credited of the time of his prevented preventive imprisonment? Yes. So that's uh, very clear in Article 29 on the deduction of the period of preventive imprisonment applies where the accused is sentenced to this zero because this zero also constitutes deprivation of liberty. And so with offenders who have undergone preventive imprisonment, even if the penalty imposed is reclusion perpetua, because it does not make any distinction between temporal and perpetual penalties. Apply nga po siya sa tanan. So, kung nag-serve na siya of 20 years in, in, in uh, preventive imprisonment, yung sentence is 30 years. No, kung na-convict siya after 20 years, kayo sa edukay ba ang kaso? Na-convict siya after 20 years, so mag-start, ang reckoning period sa pag-count sa iyahang service of sentence is from the time nga na, na imprison siya on the national pre, preventive imprisonment mga category so dito then 10 years na lang ang iyahang um, i-serve after the promulgation of judgment more so since reclusion perpetua now has a fixed period although still indivisible effects of the penalties according to their respective nature Article 30, Effects of the Penalties of Perpetual or Temporary Absolute Disqualification The penalties of perpetual or temporary absolute disqualification for public office shall produce the following effects. Number one, the deprivation of the public offices and employments which the offender may have held even if conferred by popular election. Number two, the deprivation of the right to vote in any election for any popular office or to be elected to such office. Number three, the disqualification for the offices or public employments and for the exercise of any of the rights mentioned. In case of temporary disqualification, such disqualification as is comprised in paragraphs two and three of this article shall last during the term of the sentence. 
for the loss of all rights for to retirement pay or other pension for any office formerly held. Article 31, effect of the penalties of perpetual or temporary special disqualification. The penalties of perpetual or temporary, temporary per special disqualification for public office, profession, or calling shall produce the following effects. Number one, the deprivation of the office, employment, profession, or calling affected. Number two, the disqualification for holding similar offices or employments either perpetually or during the term of the sentence according to the extent of such disqualification. Article 32, effect of the penalties or of perpetual or temporary special disqualification for the exercise of the right of suffrage. The perpetual or temporary special disqualification for the exercise of the right of suffrage shall deprive the offender perpetually or during the term of the sentence, according to the nature of said penalty, of the right to vote in any popular election for any public office or to be elected to such office. Moreover, the offender shall not be permitted to hold any public office during the period of his disqualification. Article 33, effects of the penalties of suspension from any public office, profession, or calling, or the right of suffrage. Article 33, effects of the penalties of suspension from any public office, profession, or calling, or the right of suffrage. The suspension from public office, profession, or calling, and the exercise of the right of suffrage shall disqualify the offender from holding such office or exercising such profession or calling or right of suffrage during the term of the sentence. The person suspended from holding public office shall not hold another having similar functions during the period of this suspension. So Article 34, Civil Interdiction shall deprive the offender during the time of his sentence of the rights of parental authority or guardianship either as to the person or property of any ward of marital authority of the right to manage his property and of the right to dispose of such property by any act or any conveyance inter vivos. Article 35 Effects of Bond to Keep the Peace It shall be the duty of any person sentenced to give bond to keep the peace to present two sufficient sureties which shall undertake that such person will not commit the offense sought to be prevented, and that in case such offense be committed, they will pay the amount determined by the court in the judgment or otherwise to deposit such amount in the office of the clerk of court to guarantee said undertaking. The court shall determine according to its discretion the period of duration of the bond. Should the person sentenced fail to give the bond as required, he shall be detained for a period which shall in no case exceed six months. Is he shall have been prosecuted for a grave or less grave felony and shall not exceed 30 days if for a like felony. Article 36, pardon and its effect. A pardon shall not work the restoration of the right to hold public office or the right of suffrage unless such rights be expressly restored by the terms of the pardon. A pardon shall in no case exempt the culprit from the payment of the civil indemnity imposed upon him by the sentence. Ter Article 37, costs, what are included? Costs shall include fees and indemnities in the course of the judicial proceedings, whether they may be fixed or unalterable amounts previously determined by law or regulations in force or amounts not subject to schedule. Article 38, pecuniary liabilities, order of payment. In case the property of the offender should not be sufficient for the payment of all his pecuniary liabilities, the same shall be met in the following order. Number one, the reparation of the damage cause. Number two, indemnification of consequential damages. Number three, the fine and for the cost of the proceedings. Article 39, subsidiary penalty. If the convict has no property with which to meet the fine mentioned in the paragraph 3 of the next preceding article, he shall be subject to a subsidiary personal liability at the rate of one day for each 8 pesos subject to the following rules. If the principal penalty imposed be prison correctional or arrest law and fine, he shall remain under confinement until his fine referred to in the preceding paragraph is satisfied. But his subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed one-third of the term of the sentence, 
and in no case shall it continue to more than one year, and no fraction or part of a day shall be counted against the prisoner. When the principal penalty imposed be only a fine, the subsidiary imprisonment shall not exceed six months if the culprit shall have been prosecuted for a grave or less grave felony, and shall not exceed 15 days if for a light felony. 3. When the principal imposed is higher than prison correctional, no subsidiary imprisonment shall be imposed upon the culprit. 4. If the principal penalty imposed is not to be executed by confinement in a penal institution, but such penalties of fixed duration, the convict during the period of time established in the preceding rules shall continue to suffer the same deprivations as those of which the principal penalty consists. Fifth, the subsidiary personal liability which the convict may have suffered by reason of his insolvency shall not relieve him from the fine in case his financial circumstances should improve. Section 3 Penalties in which other accessory penalties are inherent. Article 40 Death, its accessory penalties. The death penalty, when it is not executed by reason of commutation or pardon, shall carry with it that of perpetual absolute disqualification and that of civil interdiction during 30 years following the date sentence, unless such accessory penalties have been expressly remitted in the pardon. Article 41, Reclusion Perpetua and Reclusion Temporal, their accessory penalties. The penalties of reclusion perpetua and reclusion temporal shall carry with them that of civil interdiction for life or during the period of sentence as the case may be, and that of perpetual absolute disqualification which the offender shall suffer even though pardoned as to the principal penalty unless the same shall have been expressly remitted in the pardon. When reclusion perpetua is imposed as a penalty next higher than that provided by law, what is to be accessory penalty? When the penalty imposed is reclusion perpetua as a penalty next higher in degree, the accessory penalty shall be that under Article 40, but the offender shall not be given the benefit of the provision of Article 27 until 40 years have elapsed. Otherwise, there could be no difference at all between reclusion perpetua when imposed as a penalty next higher in degree and when it is imposed as a penalty fixed by law. This was elucidated in the case of People v. Bago. What are the accessory penalties of reclusion perpetua imposed as a penalty and reclusion perpetua imposed as next higher? The accessory of reclusion perpetua as a penalty is provided in Article 41 civil interdiction for life or during the period of the sentence, as the case may be, and perpetual absolute disqualification which the offender shall suffer even though pardoned as to the principal penalty, unless the same shall have been expressly remitted in the pardon. As a penalty next higher, the accessory penalties is that under Article 40 for the death penalty, when it is not executed by reason of commutation or pardon. Perpetual absolute disqualification and that of civil interdiction during 30 years following the date of sentence, unless such accessories penalties have been expressly remitted in the pardon. Article 42, Prison Mayor, its accessory penalties. The penalty of Prison Mayor shall carry with it that of temporary absolute disqualification and that of perpetual special disqualification from the right of suffrage which the offender shall suffer, although pardoned as to the principal penalty, unless the same shall have been expressly remitted in the pardon. Article 43, Prison Correctional, its accessory penalties. The penalty of prison correctional shall carry with it that of suspension from public office, from the right to follow a profession or calling, and that of perpetual special disqualification from the right of suffrage if the duration of said imprisonment shall exceed 18 months. The offender shall suffer the disqualification provided in the article, although pardoned as to the principal penalty, unless the same shall have been expressly remitted in the pardon. Article 44, Arresto, its accessory penalties. The penalty of arresto shall carry with it 
that of suspension of the right to hold office and the right of suffrage during the term of the sentence. Article 45, Confiscation and Forfeiture of the Proceeds or Instruments of the Crime Every penalty imposed for the commission of a felony shall carry with it the forfeiture of the proceeds of the crime and the instruments or tools with which it was committed. Such proceeds and instruments or tools shall be confiscated and forfeited in favor of the government, unless they be property of a third person not liable for the offense. But those articles which are not subject of lawful commerce shall be destroyed. What is required before the proceeds or instruments of the crime may be confiscated? The proceeds or instruments which are the property of third person who has no complicity in the crime cannot be confiscated unless the said articles are contraband or not subject of lawful commerce. Since confiscation is an accessory penalty, it is automatically imposed pursuant to Article 73. Application of Penalties Section 1 Rules for the application of penalties to the prisons, to the persons criminally liable, and for the graduation of the same. Article 46 Penalty to be imposed upon principles in general. Article 46 Penalty to be imposed upon principles in general. The penalty prescribed by law for the commission of a felony shall be imposed upon the principles in the commission of such felony. Whenever the law prescribes a penalty for a felony, in general terms, it shall be understood as applicable to the consummated felony. Article 47. In what cases the death penalty shall not be imposed? The death penalty shall be imposed in all cases in which it must be imposed under existing laws except in the following cases. Number one, when the guilty person be more than 70 years of age. Number two, when upon appeal or revision of the case by the Supreme Court, all the members thereof are not unanimous in their voting as to the propriety of the imposition of the death penalty. For the imposition of said death penalty, or for the confirmation of a judgment of the inferior court imposing the death sentence, the Supreme Court shall render its decision per curiam, which shall be signed by all justices of said court, unless some member or members thereof shall have been disqualified from taking part in the consideration of the case, in which even the unanimous vote and signature of only the remaining justices shall be required. Example, <clears throat> Laila Galema, a 69-year-old woman, was convicted of the crime of murder for the killing of 20 innocent lives of Malita Dacre Center children. She was sentenced by the Regional Trial Court of Death Penalty as a capital punishment of the crime committed. Is a trial court correct in the promulgation of penalty? The court ruled here, yes. While it is true that Article 47 of the Revised Penal Code provides that death penalty shall not be imposed when the guilty person be more than 70 years of age. In this case, Laila Galema is only 69 years of age and it is not within the exception to the cases where the death penalty shall not be imposed. Second example, Laila Galema, a 69-year-old woman, was convicted of the crime of murder for the killing of 20 innocent lives of Malita Dacre Center children. The Supreme Court voted en banc and majority of the justices voted to sentence Laila Galema of death penalty. Is Laila Galema can be sentenced to death? The correct answer is no. Laila Galema cannot be sentenced to death under Article 47, which provides that when upon appeal or revision of the case by the Supreme Court, all the members thereof are not unanimous in their voting as to the propriety of the imposition of death penalty, then the death penalty cannot be imposed. <clears throat> you have to take note that in this particular example, it is only majority. And the required vote is all, not only majority, but all Supreme Court justices. Now, what is the effect of RA 9346 on Article 47? Article 47 has become absolute because RA 9346 has proscribed again the imposition of the death penalty. And its stead shall be reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment as the case may be 
without any right of the offender to avail of the benefit of parole. As a matter of law, though when a convict is below 18 when he committed the offense, with or without the death penalty law, the minor shall never be put to death because minority is a privilege mitigating circumstance, which is always considered and never offset by any aggravating circumstance. Is there an automatic review of conviction where the penalty imposed is seclusion perpetua? The correct answer is none. It is only in cases where the penalty imposed is death that the trial court must forward the records of the case to the Supreme Court for automatic review of the conviction. If the convicts did not file a notice of appeal or otherwise indicate their desire to appeal, the decision convicting them and imposition imposing reclusion perpetua becomes final and unappealable. Article 48 Penalty for Complex Crime Article 48 When single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies, or when an offense is a necessary means for committing the other, the penalty for the most serious crime shall be imposed. The same to be applied in its maximum period. Example, forcible abduction with rape. The victim was abducted as a means for the commission of the crime of rape. The crime of rape, which is the one primarily intended by the suspect to commit, shall be recorded. What are the two kinds of complex crimes? The first one is compound crime or delito compuesto, when a single act constitutes two or more grave or less grave felonies. And number two, complex, sec complex crime proper or delito complejeo, when an offense is a necessary means to commit the other. What are the elements of compound crimes? Number one, a single act is committed by the offender. Number two, that single act resulted to two or more grave and or less grave felonies. Number three, the penalty provided is for the most serious in the maximum period. The classic example of a single act constituting two homicides is that of a single bullet successively killing two victims. Article 49, penalty to be imposed upon the principles when the crime committed is different from that intended. In cases in which the felony committed is different from that which the offender intended to commit, the following rules shall be observed. Number one, if the penalty prescribed for the felony committed be higher than that corresponding to the offense which the accused intended to commit, the penalty corresponding to the latter shall be imposed in its maximum period. Number two, if the penalty prescribed for the felony committed be lower than that corresponding to the one which the accused intended to commit, the penalty for the former shall be imposed in its maximum period. Number three, the rule established by the next preceding paragraph shall not be applicable if the acts committed by the guilty person shall also constitute an attempt or frustration of another crime. If the law prescribes a higher penalty for either of the latter or offenses, in which case the penalty provided for the attempted or, or the frustrated crime shall be imposed in its maximum period. Article 50, penalty to be imposed upon principles of a frustrated crime. Penalty to be imposed upon principles of a frustrated crime. The penalty next lower in degree than that prescribed by law for the consummated felony shall be imposed upon the principal in a frustrated felony. So if you happen to see the table here in the left in the right side, you can consider this one as one of the references. Article 51 penalty to be imposed upon principals of attempt, attempted crimes. A penalty lower by two degrees than that prescribed by law for the consummated felony shall be imposed upon the principals in an attempt to commit a felony. Article 52, to be a penalty to be imposed upon accomplices in consummated crime. The penalty next lower in degree than that prescribed by law for the consummated shall be imposed upon the accomplices in the commission of a consummated felony.
Article 53, penalty to be imposed upon accessories to the commission of a consummated felony. The penalty lower by two degrees than that prescribed by law for the consummated felony shall be imposed upon the accessories to the commission of a consummated felony. Article 54, penalty to be imposed upon accomplices in a frustrated crime. The penalty next lower in degree than prescribed by law for the frustrated felony shall be imposed upon the accomplices in the commission of a frustrated felony. Article 55, penalty to be imposed upon accessories of a frustrated crime. The penalty lower by two degrees than that prescribed by law for the frustrated felony shall be imposed upon the accessories to the commission of a frustrated felony. Article 56, penalty to be imposed upon accomplices in an attempted crime. The penalty next lower in degree than that prescribed by law for an attempt to commit a felony shall be imposed upon the accomplices in an attempt to commit the felony. Article 57, penalty to be imposed upon accessories of attempted crime. The penalty lower by two degrees than that prescribed by law for the attempted felony shall be imposed upon the accessories to the attempt to commit a felony. Article 58, additional penalty to be imposed upon certain accessories. Those accessories falling within the terms of paragraphs 3 of Article 19 of this Code who should act with abuse of their public functions shall suffer the additional penalty of absolute perpetual disqualification if the principal offender shall be guilty of a grave felony and that of absolute temporary disqualification if he shall be guilty of a less grave felony. Article 59, penalty to be imposed in case of failure to commit the crime because the means employed or the aims sought are impossible. When the person intending to commit an offense has already performed the acts for the execution of the same, but nevertheless the crime was not produced by reason of the fact that the act intended was by its nature one of impossible accomplishment or because the means employed by such person are essentially inadequate to produce the result desired by him. The court, having in mind the social danger and the degree of criminality shown by the offender, shall be imposed upon him the penalty of arrest to mayor or fine from 200 to 500 pesos. Article 60, exception to the rules established in Articles 50 to 40, 57. The provisions contained in Articles 50 to 57, inclusive of this code, shall not be applicable to cases in which the law expressly prescribes the penalty provided for a frustrated or attempted felony or to be imposed upon accomplices or accessories. We have quiz here, 1 to 20 items only, <clears throat> um, for 60 seconds, no? for the two items. So that is 30 seconds each. You can get some piece of paper and answer the 20 items for assessment.
next question <clears throat> Next question. A next question.
press on question Question.
press on Next question. Question.
Okay, let's check your answers. We have here answer key. Article 61 Rules for Graduating Penalties Article 61 Rules for Graduating Penalties for the purpose of graduating the penalties which, according to the provisions of Article 50 to 57, inclusive of this code are to be imposed upon persons guilty as principals of any frustrated or attempted felony or as accomplices or accessories. The following rules shall be observed. Number one, when the penalty prescribed for the felony is single and indivisible, the penalty next lower in degree shall be that immediately following that indivisible penalty in the respective graduated scale prescribed in Article 71 of this code. Second, when the penalty prescribed for the crime is composed of two indivisible penalties or of one or more divisible penalties to be imposed to their full extent, the penalty next lower in degree shall be that immediately following the lesser of the penalties prescribed in respective graduated scale. Third, when the penalty prescribed for the crime is composed of one or two indivisible penalties and the maximum period of another divisible penalty, the penalty next lower in degree shall be composed of the medium and minimum periods of the proper divisible penalty and the maximum periods of the proper divisible penalty and the maximum period of that immediately following in said respective graduated scale. Four, when the penalty prescribed for the crime is composed of several periods corresponding to different divisible penalties, the penalties next lower in degree shall be composed of the period immediately following the minimum prescribed and of the two next following which shall be taken from the penalty prescribed if possible, otherwise from the penalty immediately following in the above-mentioned respective graduated scale. 5. When the law prescribes a penalty for a crime in some manner, not especially provided for in the four preceding rules, the courts proceeding by analogy shall, compose, or shall impose corresponding penalties upon those guilty as principles of the frustrated felony or of attempt to commit the same and upon accomplices and accessories. So we have here tabulation of the provisions of the chapter as you can see here in uh, penalty prescribed or for the crime in the first row. In the first case, that is death. And penalty to be imposed upon the principal in crime, frustrated crime and accomplice in a consummated crime. That is reclusion perpetua. Penalty to be imposed upon principal in an attempted crime, the accessory in the consummated crime, and the accomplices in the frustrated crime that is reclusion perpetua following the application of the preceding articles. Penalty to be imposed upon the accessory in a frustrated crime and 
the accomplices in an attempted crime that is prison mayor. Penalty to be imposed upon the accessory in an attempted crime that is prison correctional. So in the second case, third case, and fourth case, you have to uh, scrutinize this one. Next, Section 2 rules of for the application of penalties with regard to the mitigating and aggravating circumstances and habitual delinquency. Article 62, effect of the attendance of mitigating or aggravating circumstances and of habitual delinquency. Mitigating or aggravating circumstances and habitual delinquency shall be taken into account for the purpose of diminishing or increasing the penalty in conformity with the following rules. Number one, aggravating circumstances which in themselves constitute a crime specially punishable by law or which are included by the law in defining a crime and prescribing the penalty therefore shall not be taken into account for the purpose of increasing the penalty. Number two, the same rule shall apply with respect to any aggravating circumstance inherent and the crime to such a degree that it must of necessity accompany the commission thereof. Three, aggravating or mitigating circumstances which arise from the moral attributes of the offender or from his private relations with the offended party or from any other personal cause shall only serve to aggravate or mitigate the liability of the principals, accomplices, and accessories as to whom such circumstances are attendant. For the circumstances which consist in the material execution of the act or in the means employed to accomplish it shall serve to aggravate or mitigate the liability of those persons only who had knowledge of them at the time of the execution of the act or their cooperation therein. Habitual delinquency shall have the following effects. Letter A, upon a third conviction, the culprit shall be sentenced to the penalty provided by law for the last crime of which he be found guilty, and to the additional penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods. Letter B, upon a fourth conviction, the culprit shall be sentenced to the penalty provided for the last crime of which he be found guilty, and to the additional penalty of prison mayor in its minimum and medium periods. And upon a fifth or additional conviction, the culprit shall be sentenced to the penalty provided for the last crime, for which he be found guilty, and to the additional penalty of prison mayor in its maximum period, to reclusion temporal in its minimum period. Notwithstanding the provisions of this article, the total of the two penalties to be imposed upon the offender in conformity herewith shall in no case exceed 30 years. For the purpose of this article, a person shall be deemed to be habitual delinquent is within a period of 10 years from the date of his release or last conviction of the crimes of serious or less serious physical injuries. Robo, horto, estafa, or falsification is found guilty of any said crimes a third time or offender. We have here principal penalties, the table. This is very important. You have to take note on this. We have uh, principal penalties, that is reclusion perpetua, afflictive penalties, we have reclusion temporal, perpetual temporary disqual absolute disqualification, perpetual or temporary special disqualification, and we have penalties common to the three preceding classes, prison correctional, arresto mayor, suspension, and destiero. Partial extinction of criminal liability. Article 94, criminal liability is extinguished partially. <clears throat> number one, by conditional pardon. Number two, by commutation of the sentence. And number three, for good conduct allowances, which the culprit may earn while he is serving his sentence. Specific cases where commutation is provided for by the code. First, when the convict sentence to death is over 70 years of age, that is Article 83. Second, when eight justices of the Supreme Court fail to reach a decision for the affirmance of the death penalty, in either case, the degree of the penalty is reduced from death to reclusion perpetua. In commutation of sentence, consent of the offender is not necessary. The public welfare, not his consent, determines what shall be done. That is elucidated in the case of Beadle v. Perovich. Parole should be added as number four in the enumeration of causes of partial extinction of criminal liability. 
The parole granted to a convict by the parole board should be added. A parole may be granted to a prisoner after serving the minimum penalty under the indeterminate sentence law. What is the definition of parole? It consists in the suspension of the sentence of a convict after serving the minimum term of the indeterminate penalty without granting a pardon prescribing the terms upon which the sentence shall be suspended. Is conviction necessary to revoke parole? The mere commission, not conviction by the court of any crime, is sufficient to warrant parolee's arrest and reincarceration. In a petition for habeas corpus, it was contended that the recommitment order was premature because it came down before his convictions of the series of estafa committed by him during the period of the parole. It was held that it was now rather academic, even assuming that final conviction is necessary in order to constitute a violation of the condition of the parole. That was elucidated in the case of Fortunato versus Director. Article 95, Obligation incurred by Person Granted Conditional Pardon. Any person who has been granted conditional pardon shall incur the obligation of complying strictly with the conditions imposed therein otherwise his non-compliance with any of the conditions specified shall result in the revocation of the pardon and the provisions of article 159 shall be applied to him article 96 effect of commutation of sentence the commutation of the original sentence for another of different length and nature shall have the legal effect of substituting the latter in the place of the former Article 97, Allowance for Good Conduct The good conduct of any prisoner in any penal institution shall entitle him to the following deductions from the period of his sentence. Number 1. During the first two years of his imprisonment, he shall be allowed a deduction of five days for each month of good behavior. Number 2. During the third to the fifth year, inclusive of his imprisonment, he shall be allowed a deduction of eight days for each month of good behavior. Number three, during the following years until the tenth year, inclusive of his imprisonment, he shall be allowed a deduction of ten days for each month of good behavior. And number four, during the eleventh and successive years of his imprisonment, he shall be allowed a deduction of fifteen days for each month of a good behavior. Article 98, Special Time Allowance for Loyalty, a deduction of one-fifth. Of the period of his sentence shall be granted to any prisoner who having evaded the service of his sentence under the circumstances mentioned in article 58 of this code gives himself up to the authorities within 48 hours following the issuance of a proclamation announcing the passing away of the calamity or catastrophe to in said article article 99 who grants time allowance whenever lawfully justified the director of prisons shall grant allowances for good conduct such allowances once granted shall not be revoked we have here civil liability, liability chapter 1 persons civilly liable for felonies article 100 civil liability of a person guilty of a felony Every person criminally liable for a felony is also civilly liable. In crimes against person, like the crime of physical injuries, the injured party is entitled to be paid for whatever he spent for the treatment of his wounds, doctors, fees, and for medicine, as well as the salary of wages and earned by him because of his inability to work due to his injuries. Moral damages may be recovered in a criminal offense resulting in physical injuries, in the crimes of seduction, abduction, rape, or other lascivious acts, adultery or concubinage, illegal or arbitrary detention or arrests, illegal search, libel, slander, or any other form of defamation, and in malicious prosecution. Exemplary damage is a part of the civil liability may be imposed when the crime was committed with one or more aggravating circumstances. What is the basic principle in civil liability ex delicto? Every person criminally liable is also civilly liable, crime being one of the five sources of obligation under the civil code. However, if a person is acquitted from a criminal charge, it does not mean that he is civilly free also because the quantum of proof required in a criminal prosecution is beyond reasonable doubt 
whereas in civil liability, it is a merely preponderance of evidence. To be free from civil liability on account of acquittal, therefore, this must be based on the fact that he did not commit the offense. For if his acquittal is based merely on reasonable doubt, he may still be liable. In such case, it does not mean that he did not do the act a complaint of. It may only be that the facts proved did not constitute the offense charge or the prosecution failed to prove an element of the crime. Civil liabil liability may be expressly waived by the offended. What are the two kinds of acquittal and their effects on civil liability of the accused? First is an acquittal on the ground that the accused is not the author of the act or omission complained of. This instance closes the door to civil liability liability. The second instance is an acquittal based on reasonable doubt on the guilt of the accused. However, the judgment in the criminal proceeding cannot be read in evidence in the civil action to establish any fact there determined, even though both actions involve the same act or omission. The general rule, the acquittal of accused extinguished both criminal and civil lia liability. As it is clear from the order acquitting them that the issuance of the checks did not constitute a violation of BP-22. Consequently, no civil liability arising from the alleged delict may be awarded. Exceptions. We have here the case of Osena versus Ikamina. Crime of treason, rebellion, espionage, contempt, and others wherein no civil liability arises on the part of the offender either because there are no damages to be compensated or there is no private person injured by the crime. In the ultimate analysis, what gives rise to the civil liability is really the obligation of everyone to repair or to make the whole damage caused to another by reason of his act or omission, whether done intentionally or negligently and whether or not punishable by law. We have also here exceptions. The civil case for damages is not barred since the cause of action of the heirs is based on quasi delic even if the damages are sought on the basis of crime and not quasi delic the acquittal of the bus driver will not bar recovery for dam of damages because the acquittal was based not on the finding that he was not guilty but only on reasonable doubt article 101 rules regarding civil liability in certain cases article 101 rules Regarding civil liability in certain cases, the exception from the criminal liability established in subdivisions 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 of Article 12 and in subdivision 4 of Article 11 of this code does not include exception from civil liability, which shall be enforced subject to the following rules. We have here the rules regarding civil liability in certain cases, with the exception from criminal liability established in subdivisions 1, 2, and 3, 5, and 6 of Article 12, and subdivisions 4 of Article 11 of this code does not include exception from civil liability, which shall be enforced subject to the following rules. We have Article 12, we have also Article 11. Okay, you have to... I'll read that one. So first, in cases of subdivisions 1, 2, and 3 of Article 12, the civil liability of, for acts committed by an imbecile or insane person and by a person under 9 years of age or by 1 over 9 but under 15 years of age who has acted without discernment shall devolve upon those having such person under their legal authority or control unless it appears that there was no fault or negligence on their part. Should there be no person having such insane, imbecile, or minor under his authority, legal guardianship or controlled, or if such person be insolvent, said insane, imbecile, or minor shall respond with their own property exempting property exempt from execution in accordance with the civil law. Second, in cases falling within subdivision 4 of Article 11, the persons for whose benefit the harm has been prevented shall be civilly liable, 
and proportion to the benefit which they may have received. The courts shall determine in sound discretion the proportionate amount for which each one shall be liable. When their respective shares cannot be equitably determined even approximately, or when the liability also attaches to the government or to the majority of the inhabitants of the town, and in all events, whenever the damages have been caused with the consent of the authorities or their agents, indemnification shall be made in manner prescribed by special laws or regulation. Third, in cases falling within subdivisions 5 and 6 of Article 12, the persons using violence or causing the fear shall be primarily liable and secondarily, or if there be no such person, those doing the act shall be liable, saving always to the latter that part of their property exempt from the execution. Article 102, Subsidiary Civil Liability of Inner Keepers innkeepers, tavern keepers, and proprietors of establishments. In default of the persons criminally liable in innkeepers, tavern keepers, and any other persons or corporations shall be civilly liable for crimes committed in their establishments. In all cases where a violation of uh, municipal ordinances or some general or special police regulations shall have been committed by them or uh, in their, their employees. Innkeepers are also subsidiary liable for the restitution of goods taken by robbery or theft within their houses from guests lodging therein, or for the payment of the value thereof, provided that such guests shall have notified in advance the innkeeper himself or the person representing him of the deposit of such goods within the inn and shall furthermore have followed the directions which sun keeper over such goods. No liability shall attach in case of robbery with violence against or such intimidation of persons unless committed by the innkeeper's employees. Article 103 Civil liability of other persons, the subsidiary liability established in the next preceding article, shall also apply to the employers, teachers, persons, and corporations engaged in kind of industry for felonies committed by their servants, pupils, workmen, apprentices, or employees in the discharge of their function. Should a hearing for employer subsidiary civil liability be conducted, the uh, Court ruled here, yes, in Johanna versus CA, the court must convince itself that the convicted employee is in truth in the employee of the employer. That the latter is engaged in an industry of some kind, that the employee has committed a crime to which civil liability attaches well, in the performance of his duty as such, and the execution against the employee is unsuccessful by reasonable insolvency. We are here now in Chapter 2, what civil liability includes. So we have known already what the civil liability is of a certain person who committed a certain crime. And uh, though there are some exceptions in which some of the crimes did not arise any civil liability, in the performance or the acts or omissions of the crime they have committed. Now we have here Article 104, what is included in civil liability. The civil liability established in Articles 100, 101, 102, and 103 of this code includes first, the restitution, second, the reparation of the damage caused, Third, indemnification for consequential damages. Later on, we will discuss uh, this civil liability one by one, the restitution, the reparation of the damage caused, and the indemnification for consequential damages. Article 105, restitution how made. The restitution of the thing itself must be made whenever possible with allowance of any deterioration or diminution of value as determined by the court. 
the thing itself shall be restored even though it be found in the possession of a third person who has acquired it by lawful means, saving to the latter his action against the proper person who may be liable to him. This provision is not applicable in cases in which the thing has been acquired by the third person in the manner and under the requirements which by law bar an action for its recovery. Article 106, Reparation, How Made the court shall determine the amount of damage taking into consideration the price of the thing whenever possible and its special sentimental value to the injured party, and the reparation shall be made accordingly. Article 107, Indemnification, what is included? Indemnification for consequential damages shall include not only those caused the injured party but also those suffered by his family or by a third person by reason of the crime. Article 108, Obligation to make restoration, reparation for damages or indemnification for consequential damages, and actions to demand the same, upon whom it devolves. The obligation to make restoration or reparation for damages and indemnification for consequential damages devolves upon the ears of the person liable. The action to demand restoration, reparation, and indemnification likewise descends to the ears of the person injured. Article 109 Share of each person civilly liable. If there are two or more persons civilly liable for a felony, the courts shall determine the amount for which each must respond. Article 110 Several and subsidiary liability of principles, accomplices, and accessories of a felony, preference and payment, notwithstanding the provisions of the next preceding article, the principles, accomplices, and accessories each within their respective class shall be liable severally or in solido among themselves for their quotas and subsidiaries for those of the other persons liable. The subsidiary liability shall be enforced first against the property of the principles next against that of the accomplices, and lastly against that of the accessories. Whenever the liability in solidum or in subsidiary liability has been enforced, the person by whom payment has been made shall have a right of action against the others for the amount of their respective shares. Article 111, Obligation to make restitution in certain cases. Any person who has participated gratuitously in the proceeds of a felony shall be bound to make restitution in an amount equivalent to the extent of such participation. So we have here a short quiz from Article 104 to 111. You just copy and paste in the search bar. This is an unlimited quiz. You immediately will know your scores and afterwards you are going to assess whether you pass or not. Chapter 3, Extension and Survival of Civil Liability. We have here Article 112, Extension, Extension of Civil Liability. Civil Liability established in Articles 100, 101, 102, and 103 of this Code shall be extinguished in the same manner as, as obligations in accordance with the provisions of the civil law. So, for purposes of reference, we have here Article 100, 101, 102, and 103. Civil liability is therefore extinguished, first by payment or performance, second by the loss of the thing due, third by the condemnation or remission of the debt, fourth by the confusion or merger of the rights of creditor and debtor, fifth by compensation, and sixth by novation. Other causes of extinguishment of obligations, such as annulment, rescission, fulfillment of a resolutory condition and prescription, are governed elsewhere in this code, that is Article 1231 of the Civil Code. Now, in the case of Tihoko v. E.R. Scribe in San Philippine Corporation, 103 Philippine 594 -595, Prescription is one of the modes of extinguishing obligations according to Article 1231 of the Civil Code, where a civil action for damages due on, to an alleged libel was brought more than one year after the cause of action accrued. 
said action is barred by prescription. Article 1147 of the Civil Code provides that a civil action for defamation must be brought within one year. What is the effect of condemnation of civil liability? Express condemnation by the offended party has the effect of waiving civil liability with regard to the interest of the injured party. For civil liability arising from an offense is extinguished in the same manner as other obligations in accordance with the provision of the civil law that is elucidated in the case of Balite versus People. Offender is civilly liable even if stolen property is lost by reason of force majeure, where it appears that a person has been deprived of the possession of his property, the male factor is responsible to the owner either for the return of the property or for the payment of its value, if it cannot be returned, and this whether the property is lost or destroyed by the act of the male factor or that of any other person, or as a result of any other cause or causes. Thus, even if the cattle stolen by the accused died from render pests while in the possession of the constabulary during the pendency of the trial, in case of conviction, the accused are still liable civilly for the reasonable value of the said cattle. Article 113 Obligation to Satisfy Civil Liability Except in cases of extinction of his civil liability as provided in the next preceding article, the offender shall continue to be obliged to satisfy the civil liability resulting from the crime committed by him, notwithstanding the fact that, the, that he has served the sentence consisting of deprivation of liberty or other rights, or has not been required to serve the same by reason of amnesty, pardon, commutation of sentence, or any other reason. Now, in the case of Budlong versus Apaliso, probation is then as a disposition under which a defendant, after conviction and sentence, is really subject to conditions imposed by the court and to the supervision of a probation officer. The conviction and sentence clause of the statutory definition clearly signifies that probation affects only the criminal aspect of the case. If under Article 113 of the Revised Penal Code, the obligation to satisfy civil liability continues, notwithstanding service of sentence or non-service due to amnesty, pardon, commutation of sentence, or any other reason, there is no reason why an application for probation should have an opposite effect in so far as determination of civil liability is concerned. Now, <clears throat> that is the end of... Uh, book one of the criminal law and before I end let me read this quotation by Helen Hayes the expert in anything was once a beginner I know that some of you might um, or has it out of beginning to this undertaking this tough undertaking but you have to take note that an expert were once a beginner. It all started as a, they all started as a beginner before they become an expert. Okay? <clears throat> Isang karangalan na maging bahagi ng inyong paglalakbay tungo sa inasang natagumpay. Magandang hapon.